Bubonic plague or black death. Probably in the history of humans, uh, no single disease agent has created the consternation that, that those phrases have. Actually, uh, it's not all that exotic. Uh, it's a simple bacteria, although its name certainly attests what the uh, end result is. It's called Yersinia pestis. And this is a bacteria that uh, likes to spend most of its time in rodents. In fact, I have here a little stuffed rodent. You can see that. That's a rat. And probably uh, between Yersinia pestis and this little rat, uh, more humans have died in the history of uh, at least recorded uh, uh, humanity than uh, from any other cause. What's the deal with this bacteria and this rat? Well, the bacteria lives in the rats. It has a few strategies, that, uh, a few genetic strategies that makes it highly pathogenic. And it also has the capacity to move from one host to another. And it's this capacity that makes plague uh, so problematic for us even today. Plague can travel from uh, its rodent host to a human host several ways, but the most common way is the intermediary of the flea. The flea, the rat flea, likes to live on the rat, but when the rat uh, dies, the flea looks for any kind of new host, and that host could be a human. As the flea bites the human, it regurgitates up some of the bacteria that it uh, accumulated uh, from feeding on the rat. These bacteria enter the human bloodstream. They can accumulate in the lymph nodes. When they do, the lymph node swells up, and it's called a bubo, and that's where the name bubonic plague comes from. And that's the most common way through the centuries that plague has entered the human population is by the bite of an infected rat flea. Once the organism, the bacteria, gets into the human host, it can uh, travel into the bloodstream where uh, it causes septicemic plague and it can even translocate into the lungs. Once it gets in the lungs, we call that pneumonic plague. And then you've got some real problems. The rat's out of the picture, the flea's out of the picture, and it can easily be aspirated. The bacteria can be carried on aerosols from one human to another. And of course, that's where origi uh, you know, uh, originally the term, I won't touch you with a 10-foot pole came to be, became pretty common that as you went around working with plague victims and dealing with, uh, with their bodies and trying to dispose of them, uh, this aspiration of the bacteria went from one person to another. Unchecked plague is devastating. It's a kind of pathogen. It needs a large population, but once it gets in a large population, it can move from one person to another with a high fatality rate. Unchecked plague, when it gets in the lungs, can be 90% fatal. Well, plague swept through the human population several times. The plague of Justinian is fairly well documented that ended the Roman Empire. Uh, plague in the 1300s that swept through Europe. And even plague uh, as little as about 150 years ago coming out of China. In fact, that's when plague, uh, the bacteria itself, entered the United States about 1900, carried over on infected rats uh, on cargo ships from uh, China. Since that time, at least in the United States, plague has steadily moved eastward, uh, infecting rodent populations and occasionally humans that come in contact with infected rodents. Plague hangs out in rodent populations in many places in the world now, places where maybe it wasn't originally found. Therefore, uh, plague's always going to be with us. It's in an animal reservoir, transmitted to us uh, either by uh, the bite of an infected flea or maybe from hunters who, who kill these animals and come in contact with their infected body fluids or tissues. We have to be on the alert. When we do see plague, it's pretty easy to kill with uh, common antibiotics. It uh, is easy to treat. Problem is, we don't see it that often, and in a lot of parts of the world, the surveillance isn't so good. So plague, a disease that uh, hangs out in rodents, moves to humans where we make a delightful host, and unchecked in humans can cause devastating pandemics, and is still with us today.